and greetings everyone and welcome to my review of Star Trek Online's top 10 lobby ships. Now I'm sure you are aware or may not be aware as the case may be uh, that Star Trek Online is currently halfway through their grand event for 2021. And uh, for those of you who are contemplating on which ship to claim after the event is completed, I thought it would be a good idea to help you with the process by bringing you my top 10 lobby ships. But before I bring you my top 10 lobby ships, let's familiarise ourselves with the 2021 event awards. Option 1. You can acquire any Infinity Promo or Infinity Lockbox T6 ship. Option 2. You can claim 1,500 Lobby Crystals once per account and you can then go on to the Lobby Crystal Consortium and pick your own ship. Or option 3. You can receive two 100% off coupons for any tier 6 ships in the Zen store. Gain once per account. So, in the coming few weeks, I will try to bring you my top 10 T6 starships and promotional and infinity lockbox ships. So keep a look out for these new releases. But before we proceed, if you haven't already done so, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give us a like as well, as that always makes our day. So, without further ado, let's move on to the main event, starting at number 10. And at 10 we have the T6 Tholian Iktomi class ship. This is a science vessel and can be obtained from the Lobby Consortium for 900 Lobby. It has a hull modifier of 1.05, a shield modifier of 1.5 and a turn rate of 10. The ship masteries start at level 1 with enhanced particle generators which gives a plus 15% damage to exotic damage abilities. At tier 2 it has advanced shield systems which gives 10% shield hit points. And at level 3 we have enhanced restorative circuitry which improves hull healing abilities by 10% and also improves shield healing abilities by 10%. At level 4 we have reactive shield technology. 5% shield regeneration every 6 seconds and reduces damage to shield by 5%. And at level 5 we have the trait improved photonic officer, which extends the duration of the photonic officer by 10 seconds. When activating photonic officer you receive 25% bonus shield healing for 30 seconds, 25% bonus exotic damage for 30 seconds and 25% bonus hull healing also for 30 seconds. The Tholian Ectomy comes equipped with the console Universal Enhanced Tholian Web Generator. And this console can form part of the Tholian Technology Set, which also includes the console Universal Enhanced Tholian Tetran Grid and console Universal Tholian Web Cannon, obtained from other Tholian vessels. At 9 we have the Zahal Heavy Cruiser, which is an extremely durable ship. It comes with a hull modifier of 1.3, shield modifier of 1.3 and a turn rate of 8.5, which is rather slow. Having said that, it is a 4 weapons to the front and 4 weapons to the rear ship. It has a bonus power of plus 5 to weapons power and plus 10 to shield power and plus 5 to engine power. And this makes it an excellent tanking ship. Its masteries at level 1 include absorptive hull plating which gives 25% physical damage resistance rating and plus 25% kinetic damage resistance rating. At level 2 we have rapid repairs, regenerates 1.25% of your maximum hull every 3 seconds in space, twice the amount is regenerated out of combat. At level 3 we have enhanced hull plating, plus 25 all energy damage resistance rating and plus 25 damage resistance rating. At tier 4 we have Armoured Hull which gives plus 10% hull hit points. At tier 5 we have the trait Invincible and this is why the Zahal Heavy Cruiser is at number 9. This trait is proved very useful. It has a hull heal buff and unkillable at low hull when reduced below 5% hull. Plus 5% incoming hull healing for 8 seconds plus 50% incoming shield healing for 8 seconds unkillable for 8 seconds and once activated this trait cannot trigger again for 120 seconds. The Sahal Heavy Cruiser comes equipped with the console Universal Temporal Shielding. 
matrix. This ability is part of the Coalition Timeline Manipulation Set, which also includes the Console Universal Timeline Analysis Sensor Grid. This console is obtainable with the Krenum Imperium warship, but can also be equipped on the Zahal Heavy Cruiser. If both consoles are equipped, an additional passive bonus will be unlocked, Timeline Analysis. Zahal Heavy Cruiser supports the following cruiser commands, weapon system efficiency, shield frequency modulation, strategic maneuvering and attract fire. Zahal Heavy Cruiser features the following specialist seats, Lieutenant Science Intelligence and Lieutenant Commander Universal Command. And at 8 we have the Husnok Warship. This is also a tier 6 ship. This has a hull modifier of 1.27, shield modifier of 1.1 and a turn rate of 12. This is a very agile ship and has 5 weapons to the front and 3 weapons to the rear. Its masteries include at level 1 precise weapon system which gives a plus 5 accuracy rating, at level 2 enhanced weapon banks which gives plus 15 critical severity, at tier 3 we have devastating weaponry which gives it a plus 2.5 critical chance. At tier 4 we have enhanced weapon systems which gives a plus 10% kinetic damage and a plus 10% all energy damage. At tier 5 we have directed energy flux and this gives directed energy flux, beam overload and cannon rapid fire gain 25% and bonus damage for 15 seconds. The Husnot warship comes equipped with the console universal heavy particle flux array. This ability is part of the Privateer Weapons Modification Set, which also includes the console Universal Mirrodon Sensor Baffler. This console is obtainable with the Mirrodon Theta Class Heavy Raider, but can also be equipped on the Husnock warship. If both consoles are equipped, an additional passive bonus will be unlocked, the Mirrodon Sensor Baffler. I really do like this ship, and I actually like it for the trait as well. Directed energy modulation, which boosts cannons, rapid fire, and beam overload damage. And at number seven, we have a ship which is affectionately known as the Dog Sled, or aka the Zindi Primate Athlet Dreadnought Cruiser. This ship has a hull modifier of 1.3, a shield modifier of 1.2, and a turn rate of 9. This ship has a bonus power of plus 5 to all power levels and has weapons 4 to the front and 4 to the rear. The Atleth Dreadnought Cruiser Masteries include level 1 Rapid Repairs which regenerates at 1.25% of your maximum hull every 3 seconds in space. Twice the amount is regenerated out of combat. At tier 2 we have Enhanced Hull Plating which gives plus 25 all energy damage resistance rating and plus 25 radiation damage resistance rating. At tier 3 we have devastating weaponry which is plus 2.5% critical chance. At tier 4 we have armored hull which gives a plus 10% hull hit point. And for the mastery we have super weapon ingenuity and this is the reason why this ship is at number 7. This mastery is extremely useful for beam overload builds. The Zindi Primate Atlas Dreadnought Cruiser comes equipped with the console Universal Subspace Chemosite Deployment. This console is part of the Experimental Weaponry Set which also includes the console Universal Enhanced Cascade Resonance Catalyst, the Universal Enhanced Zindi Weapon Platform and the Infectious Biomatter Generator. The Atlas Dreadnought Cruiser also comes equipped with a single wing of Zindi Primate Nosuti Heavy Fighters. These fighters are equipped with one 4 Plasmatic Biomatter Beam Array, with one 4 Quantum Torpedo Launcher and an aft Plasmatic Biomatter Beam Array. And they can also use the Beam Array Fire at Will 1. If you can get past the looks of this ship, you will find that this ship is a really, really good ship to use. And its trait is second to none, and a must-have trait for any beam build. At number 6, we have the Jemadar Heavy Strike Wing Escort. This ship has a hull modifier of 1.2, has a shield modifier of 1.0, a turn rate of 15. The bonus power is plus 10 weapons power with a plus 5 shield power and a plus 5 auxiliary power. This ship has weapons of 4 to the front and 3 to the rear. Its ship's masteries include level 1, precise weapon systems which gives a plus 5 accuracy rating, level 2, tactical maneuvering which gives a plus 5% defense, 
Tier 3 Enhanced Weapon Systems, which gives a plus 10% kinetic damage and a plus 10% all energy damage. And Tier 4 Devastating Weaponry, which gives a 2.5% critical chance. The trait at level 5, Tactical Analysis, while this trait is slotted, activating Tactical Team will provide a boost to hull penetration for a short time. This buff does not stack. Upon activating Tactical Team, your weapons gain 20 armor penetration for 10 seconds. The Jemadar Heavy Strike Wing Escort can launch attack wings of Jemadar fighters in its standard configuration, though other hangar pets can be equipped in its hangar slot. Jemadar fighters are armed with polar on pulse cannons and can use directed energy modulation. This ship is an excellent ship to use in PvP matches, and with its bonus power of plus 10 to weapons power, and plus 5 shield power, and plus 5 auxiliary power, it can certainly hold its own in PvP matches, and I would highly recommend it. And at 5 we have the Tal Shiar Adapted Battle Cruiser, and if you want a big ship that looks ominous, then this is the ship for you. This ship has a hull modifier of 1.4, a shield modifier of 1.3 and a slow turn rate of 7. It has a bonus power of plus 10 shield power and plus 10 auxiliary power. Its weapons include 4 weapons to the front and 4 weapons to the rear. Its abilities include weapon system efficiency, shield frequency modulation and static manoeuvring. And moving on to the traits, level 1 Absorbative Hull Plating, which gives a plus 25 physical and kinetic damage resistance rating. At level 2 we have Enhanced Weapons Banks, which gives plus 15% critical severity. At level 3 we have Enhanced Hull Plating, which is plus 25 all energy damage resistance rating and radiation damage resistance rating. Level 4 we have Armoured Hull, which gives a plus 10% hull hit points. The trait, Assimilated Power Conduit, while this trait is slotted, activating Emergency Power to Auxiliary will grant a boost to Exotic Damage, Critical Chance and Exotic Damage, Critical Severity also for a short time. It enhances Specific Powers, plus 5% Critical Chance for 20 seconds to Exotic Damage Abilities and plus 25% Critical Damage for 20 seconds to Exotic Damage Abilities. The Tal Shiar Adapter Battle Cruiser comes equipped with the console Universal Enhanced Indoctrination Nanite Dispersal System. The Enhanced Indoctrination Nanite Dispersal System utilizes adapted Borg technology to deploy advanced nanites to subvert the weapons of an enemy vessel. Once the nanites have taken over the target's weapon system, they will cause the target to fire randomly at their allies, dealing electric damage to any nearby friendly units they can target. The enemy vessel will be unable to disable their own weapons during this time or fire them on targets of their choosing. This console also provides a passive bonus to auxiliary power and turn rate. This ship also comes with a cloak and sensor analysis and it also comes with a unique Talshiar adapted Borg warp core and this boosts the ship's hull as well as its auxiliary power. It also increases the maximum warp speed in sector space. This warp core is also part of the Talshiar adapted Borg technology set, utilising both the warp core and consoles found on other Talshiar adapted vessels, which unlocks a passive ability which deals additional exotic particle damage when using offensive science abilities. And at 4 we have the Walker Light Exploration Cruiser. This is a really, really nice ship and I really enjoy flying her. She has a hull modifier of 1.3 and a shield modifier of 1.1 and a turn rate of 10. She has a bonus power of plus 5 and she carries weapons of 5 to the front and 3 to the rear. Her abilities include weapon system efficiency, shield frequency modulation, static manoeuvring and attract fire. The masteries for this ship at level 1 is Absorptive Hull Plating, which gives a plus 25 physical and kinetic damage resistance rating. At level 2 we have Rapid Repairs, and this regenerates 1.25% of your maximum hull every 3 seconds in space, twice the amount is regenerated out of combat. At level 3 we have Enhanced Hull Plating, and this gives a plus 25 all energy damage and radiation damage resistance rating. 
At level 4 we have Armoured Hull and this gives you a plus 10% hull hit points. At 5 the trait is Vulcan Hello and while this trait is active your weapons gain a shield and armour penetration bonus and weapon power drain from energy weapon activation is reduced for a brief duration when you first encounter combat. Upon entering combat you receive plus 20 energy weapon armour penetration for 8 seconds and a plus 20 energy weapon shield penetration for 8 seconds and a minus 50 weapons power cost for 8 seconds. This ship also comes with one of my favourite consoles of the game although it's not well liked in PvP matches and this is the Universal Obfuscation Screen. This console can be equipped on any starship in any console slot. This console is very useful when your ship is receiving massive amounts of damage as it succeeds in convincing nearby foes that your starship has been disabled though it comes with the requirement of holding the ship in place and preventing all abilities from being activated. During this period of time your ship's hull and shields will rapidly replenish. This mode may be disabled voluntarily at any time after a brief activation period at which point the advantage gained from this ruse is translated into an increased damage from all sources. The duration of this ambush bonus is equivalent to the amount of time your ship remained disabled with a maximum of 20 seconds. This console also provides a passive bonus to targeting expertise, defence manoeuvring, damage control and engineering readiness. I was so impressed with this ship after I used it that I eventually went on to buy the legendary version and to be honest with you I am not disappointed. And at 3 if you want a small ship that's great fun to fly then the NX Escort Refit is the ship for you. This ship has a hull modifier of 1.1, shield modifier of 1 and a turn rate of 16. She has a bonus power of plus 15 to weapons power and a plus 5 engine power. Her weapons include 5 weapons to the front and 2 to the rear. Her masteries at level 1 include precise weapon systems which gives a plus 5 accuracy rating. At level 2 we have tactical manoeuvring which gives a plus 5% defence. At level 3 we have enhanced weapon systems which gives a plus 10% kinetic and all energy damage. At tier 4 we have devastating weaponry which gives a plus 2.5% critical chance. The trait is preferred targeting and while this trait is slotted, activating beams fire at will or cannon scatter volley will cause beam overload and cannon rapid fire to do 100% additional damage for the next 30 seconds. This ship comes equipped with an experimental weapon slot and the point defence bombardment warhead which is part of the synergistic retrofitting set. Other consoles from this set can be equipped for set bonuses and additional abilities. The synergistic retrofitting set includes the following Dynamic Power Redistributor Module, Disruption Pulse Emitter, Secondary Shield Projector and Point Defense Bombardment Warhead. Upon acquiring all four pieces of this set you will find that this will upgrade all the consoles that you have in this set and give them additional bonuses. I personally think that this ship is great fun and I really enjoy flying her and she still features in some of my builds today. And at number 2, this is another one of my personal favourites, the Marquis Raider. This has a hull modifier of 1.1 and a shield modifier of 0.8 and a turn rate of 20. You get a bonus power of plus 15 weapons power, plus 5 shield power, plus 5 engine power and plus 5 auxiliary power. The masteries for this ship at level 1 is precise weapon systems which gives a plus 5 accuracy rating. At level 2 we have tactical manoeuvring which gives a plus 5% defence. At level 3 we have enhanced weapon systems which gives a plus 10% kinetic and all energy damage. At tier 4 we have enhanced weapons banks which gives a plus 15% critical severity. The trait, level 5, is Badlands Tactics. While this starship trait is slotted and you are within 3km of an anomaly or plasma storm, 
you control, you gain a moderate boost to stealth defense and flanking damage. Upon activating this ability, we'll create a massive plasma storm at your target's location. The plasma storm deals plasma damage and pulls enemy into its center while drastically slowing their flight speed. This console also provides a passive bonus to Starship Control Expertise and Starship Particle Generator skills. This console may be equipped in any console slot on any Starship. If you acquire this ship, then you won't be disappointed as it comes with an experimental weapon slot and the phlogiston projector. This experimental weapon emits an oxygen rich mixture of these gaseous elements harvested from the Badlands plasma fields and ignites them. This violent reaction briefly burns at temperatures comparable to solar ejections, causing structural damage to even the hardiest of starships. And it doesn't stop there, as this ship comes with a silical quantum slipstream drive. The silical quantum slipstream drive is a built-in ability which allows improved sector space travel speed of 107.8, approximately warp 23 for 90 seconds instead of the normal 30 seconds. Reinitializing it takes 30 seconds instead of the normal 120. And if you thought that was all you was getting, then think again. The Marquee Raider also comes with innovation effects. The Marquee Raider features built-in innovation mechanic which requires activation of three bridge officer abilities corresponding to colours on the innovation display window. Successfully matching the colours will automatically trigger the available innovation effect for 10 seconds. One of the six possible innovation effects will be randomly selected each time the innovation mechanic refreshes. And let's not forget the improved Raider flanking, which gives a plus 40% damage when attacking an NPC's enemy rear arc, or a 13% damage when attacking a player enemy's rear arc. As I said earlier, this ship is one of my favourite ships, and I actually use it quite a lot in PvP matches. And it comes packed with all sorts of toys and gadgets, and I would highly recommend you considering this ship if you decide that you would like to go for it. And finally, at one, I'm sure you've now guessed it, but my number one ship is the Kelvin Timeline Vengeance Intel Dreadnought Cruiser. This ship has some big abilities, and it's also an awesome ship, and it is my favourite lobby ship. It's a Dreadnought Cruiser, and it comes with a hull modifier of 1.5 and a shield modifier of 1.1 with a turn rate of 7. It has a bonus power of plus 15 weapons power and a plus 5 shield power. It has weapons of 5 to the front and 3 to the rear. And its abilities are as follows. Broadside Cannon Barrage, a Cloak, it can even launch Kelvin Timeline Assault Drones, Carrier Commands, Active Sensor Arrays, Weapon System Efficiency and Attract Fire. This ship's masteries at level 1 is Rapid Repairs, regenerates 1.25 of your maximum hull every 3 seconds in space, twice the amount is regenerated out of combat. At level 2 we have enhanced hull plating which gives a plus 25 all energy damage and radiation damage resistance rating. At level 3 we have devastating weaponry which gives a plus 2.5% critical chance. At level 4 we have armoured hull which gives a plus 10% hull hit points. At 5 we have the trait target rich environment. Beam, fire at will and cannon scatter and volley increase weapons damage, a plus 1% directed energy damage per target, hit while cannon scatter volley or beam, fire at will is active. This stacks up to 30 times and generates up to 4 stacks per second. This vessel comes equipped with the broadside emitter array which is a universal console and forms part of the alternate timeline set. Other consoles from this set can be equipped for set bonuses and additional abilities. As this ship is an intelligence starship, the Kelvin Vengeance Intel Dreadnought Cruiser is capable of deploying an Intel Sensor Drone, which gathers intelligence on vulnerable foes. In addition, while the target is vulnerable, you can deploy one of three Expo's vulnerability abilities, which can be used. These powerful abilities find a critical weakness in the targeted foe and allow players to briefly exploit it. 
Intelligence vessels also have a built-in passive ability which renders them undetectable at long range. The Vengeance class has a cloak, but unfortunately it is not a battle cloak and it cannot be deployed while the ship is in combat. However, upon decloaking, you do get a damage bonus. I must admit, this ship is full of surprises and I really enjoy the bridge of this ship as well. A lot of effort has gone into making this bridge look and feel like it should. So there you have it, my top 10 personal lobby starships. Of course, as always, this is my own personal view and you may have a view of your own. And if you do, by all means, drop me a line. Please, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and give us a like as well. So, until next time, this is Jester, signing off.